All right, guys. I hope you can hear me well. It's kind of windy today, but today we're working on something I don't see too often. I got a 30-ton package unit here, train, of course, and our problem is a very warm kitchen. Now, this system uses a zone sensor, which is in the kitchen, and our thermostat says, according to that zone sensor, our space is 64 degrees, which obviously it's not. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to make sure that this unit is mechanically sound, that there's no issues with it, and then we will address the uh, zone sensing issue. So, let's uh, start pulling some panels off. This thing is, this thing is massive compared to what I'm used to seeing. Alright, let's get a quick look at our micro channel coil here. Let's see if we can pick that up on camera. It is really, really clean. I don't know if it's translating well on camera. You can kind of see through it. Uh, but yeah, you can see all the way through this coil. So this coil is nice and clean. Then we're going to come over here to our ginormous evaporator. Now I'm about six foot. This unit's got to be about six and a half foot tall. I'm just going to step right inside here to get out of the wind. Yeah, this is a, uh, it's a big old unit right here. Now, I'm not actually looking for a problem inside here, but I'm a curious guy by nature, so whenever I see a unit this big, I like to explore a little bit. No harm, no foul. Worst thing that could happen is i become a little bit of a better technician from looking around out here, so. I'm sure you can hear the wind out here. It's a really, really windy day out today. And I took that door off because I was tired of getting hit in the face with it. Now, I don't know if this is a train thing. It doesn't look like it's from the factory, so I don't know if this is a train thing or maybe an on-site maintenance guy put that on there but apparently it was there to I guess maybe hold the doors open or something but it, it does no good especially on windy days like today so long story short it takes 30 seconds to pop that door off and you don't get hit in the face anymore so let's start with the simple stuff first let's check see if we even have a call for Y1 I don't think we do because our zone sensor is telling our thermostat that it's uh, 64 degrees in our kitchen There we go, we have no voltage, and that is from Y1 to Common. I'd like to thank, thank you guys out there who were uh, telling me about that. I was, I guess, just used to doing Y1 to Ground, but Common is a much better way to, to measure your voltages. Now let's do Red to Common. I do have control voltage, but as I thought, I'm not getting it from the thermostat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bypass that. I'm just going to kick it into... Uh, Probably second stage cooling, get a supply temp, get a couple readings, and then we'll go from there. But I believe our problem is that zone sensor downstairs, so. All right, let me bypass this, guys, and I will get back to you in just a minute. All right, here's our tip of the day, guys. For all you new guys out there, this is probably obvious, but just in case it's not obvious, when you're working on a customer's piece of equipment, clean up after yourself. Don't leave cigarette butts in your machine, old zip ties, terminal ends. It takes 11 seconds to throw this stuff away. Don't be lazy. Chances are our customer isn't going to come up here and inspect it, but one day they might, and they're going to know that you did it. Or even if, for example, if I leave this here, and tomorrow my customer comes up here, they're going to think I left it this way. So I'm going to clean all this stuff out of here because I don't want to have the reputation of the guy who just leaves garbage inside of package units, all right? That's your tip of the day, guys. Today is a, a very adventurous day for me, so I happen to be walking around. I noticed this uh, Copeland condensing unit over here, and if you look closely right there, you'll see we have our liquid line right here, our suction line, and then also another suction line coming off the main suction line. Um, 
Now, I've never seen one of these in the wild before, so if anybody out there has seen one of these, enlighten me. But I did recently read about them in um, uh, Commercial Refrigeration for Air Conditioning Technicians by Dick Wurz. The best book on the market, in my humble opinion. Um, so, what if I remember correctly, when it's at full capacity, when they say, I don't know how many how many coolers or how many racks or whatever are hooked up to this system, I'm not familiar with that, but uh, from what I read, if I remember correctly, is that when it's at full capacity and say all coolers are calling for cooling, it uses both these suction lines. Now at lower capacity, say one only, only one cooler needs to be, needs to cool off. Um, the other suction line, this larger suction line, down at the bottom inside the cooler will have a reverse trap on it, and that reverse trap will fill up with oil, and then it will only suck our, uh, our gas up through this other suction line. So when that other trap fills up the oil, it kind of blocks it off, and then it only sucks oil, or excuse me, only sucks our uh, refrigerant up and through this suction line. So um, it's kind of neat to see one of those in the wild. Come over here. We got a bunch of crazy stuff on this one. Huh. Looks like we got uh, some sort of, I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but looks like we have a TXV right there. I'm assuming that's probably for capacity control. Uh, looks like right back there we have what appears to be an automatic expansion valve maybe. Hmm, interesting. Well guys, if anybody out there knows exactly what I'm looking at, please let me know. Um, I'm gonna go home and do a little bit of research on this because that's pretty cool. Like I said, I've never seen one of these in the wild, so it's new to me. Anyway, back at the task at hand. I have our unit bypassed in stage two cooling. It looks like we got some contactors going. I don't hear our compressors running. Might have to pull this bottom panel off and see what's going on over there. We got condenser fan action, but no compressors yet. All right, guys, let me dig into this, and when I figure out something, I'll bring it back. We're in stage two cooling now. That is to our condenser motors, 10 amps. That, I believe, is our stage one compressor. It came on first, 15 amps. Stage two, 14 amps. On this, uh, I believe it's uh, a 30 ton unit. Let's check our supply temp over here. About 58.9 and dropping. Yeah, I don't think we have any sort of mechanical issue with this unit. Like I said, I believe our issue is just that zone sensor downstairs. So I'm gonna try to get a little bit of footage downstairs of that zone sensor if I can. At least it'll be less windy. So, all right guys, let me uh, see what the supply temperature drops down to. I wanna see it get down below 55, and then we'll go downstairs and start looking at that zone sensor. Here's our wall of thermostats. We are looking at number four. So, our zone sensor says it's 70. I did just pull that stat off the wall. It said 64 before I pulled it off and put it back on there for some apparent reason. I'm not sure what that did, but I wanted to make sure our, and see there's our zone sensor, S1, S1. Now I ohmed that out, it was 9.6 across that zone sensor, which is comparable to the other zones, so. Go 
we get an actual temperature near that zone sensor. All right, here's our zone sensor. My probe says 84, if that zone sensor is correct. At the stat it says 64, at one point it said 68, and then it also said 70. Now that zone sensor has been replaced, so I'm going to pop the cover off just to make sure the wiring is set up properly, but we're definitely not reading accurate temperatures. Here's my idea, I'm going to tie my two zone sensor wires, I'm going to tie them together and I'm going to go back to that zone sensor and test for continuity. I should have continuity over there if those wires are either broken or if they're correct at all. Keep in mind my rooftop unit is off so I'm at no risk of damaging any low voltage circuitry upstairs. So let me go over to my zone sensor and check for continuity. Alright so as you can see we're now reading 80 degrees, so we're now actually reading our zone sensor. Now what had happened was somebody had programmed the zone sensor to read at the thermostat body instead of the zone sensor. So I just went through and reprogrammed it. So now we're actually reading at the zone sensor instead of the thermostat body. So I believe we're all set. I'm going to wait around, watch this thing kick into cooling, and we'll see what happens. All right, guys, so as you can see behind me, there's a storm coming, so it's just about time to get out of here. Um, it looks like all we had downstairs was a simple programming issue. They had another company out a couple days ago replacing that zone sensor uh, because they determined that the zone sensor was bad. Um, I think that maybe they replaced the zone sensor without checking the programming of that unit, possibly. How it got screwed up, I really have no idea. But as you've seen, after I programmed it to actually read that zone sensor, we were reading correctly. I just came up here on the roof, and I powered on our ginormous package unit here. Um, we're just waiting for it to kick on. With these train, there there is a delay, an anti-short cycling delay of about two minutes or so. And then it'll probably want to go through the economizer, see if it's, it's going to kick into safe with cooling. But I think I just heard our condensers come on. So. Give it about five or ten minutes, guys, and I'm going to re record my after repair supply temperatures. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Any questions, feel free to shoot me some comments, emails. I'm always open for suggestions, tips, advice. Anything you see I'm doing wrong, let me know. I'm not perfect, I just try to be. It's a journey. So, anyway, guys, like and subscribe. See you on the next one. All right.